I want to talk a little bit about rethinking our use of space and time as churches. Churches are running out of places to meet. Uh, new churches getting started. Schools aren't letting them in. Schools are actually kicking churches out, maybe did during the pandemic and are not going to let them back in. Community centers, the same thing. Uh, it's really time that we rethink our use of the space that we have or the space that we don't have. And we're going to have to get creative here. This may be an Acts 8 type event. This whole business of what's going on in the pandemic and what's going on in the aftermath may be God's way of kind of just putting his foot down and saying, it's time for you guys to start thinking about reproducing and multiplying churches, a lot of small ones rather than a few big ones. And that's exactly what happened to the Jerusalem church in Acts chapter 8, where the gospel really started to spread around the world. Churches are losing spaces. Some of the solutions might be that churches that have space begin to share it with other churches. Uh, I know of one man who is a pastor in North Hollywood, California. There are five distinct congregations. I don't mean, you know, that they're running multiple congregations in this church. There's five churches using this one church campus. So now they're getting into thinking about time differences because not everybody's meeting on Sunday morning at the same time. And so these kinds of things are the things that we're going to need to think of. I have a friend named Kaz Sakine who started a church in Tokyo and he started it in the in the summertime and there was a typhoon. Everybody is sitting in a park, they're outdoors in a park, and they're holding up umbrellas in a horrible windy rainstorm and they hold church and they met there for like 18 months. Uh, the last Sunday that they were there, they're under umbrellas again in a snowstorm with about eight inches of snow on the ground. They moved from there to a bar. We need to get creative about this. I know some micro churches that meet in the, 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 like the waiting room of an auto body shop. I know of another church that a guy would actually roll the cars out in his automotive repair shop and they would have church in the garage. These are the kinds of things that we're going to have to do if the pressure gets worse than it is right now. I, a church that we helped start in Kobe, Japan, met in a school. It was a school that was run by Buddhists. It was supposed to be a Christian school, but the president was a Buddhist. And when the little Sunday night sing-along turned actually into a church, the, everybody lost their jobs that were involved in the thing, and they got thrown out. They moved to a labor union hall across the street. From there, they rented a very small commercial space and met multiple times on a Sunday. So this is an option. The space that you might look at and go, this will never fit my church. Yes, it would if you'd use it four, five, six, seven times in a week. If we develop preaching teams, if we get more into dialogue, whatever, smaller space actually begins to work well for us. And so as we're thinking about these things, one of my friends, they meet in coffee shops and they meet in weeknights in coffee shops. Most privately held coffee shops, not Starbucks, close at around five o'clock, 5.30, whatever. They are usually willing to rent their space. They can't be too afraid of the pandemic because they're open every day, all day to the public. And so they'd be willing to rent to you. It turns out there's 35,000 coffee shops like this. And now we're starting to bridge over into time from space because these people are meeting at weeknights at 6 or 7 p.m. So I'd like to hear from you in the comments section below or whatever. Um, I'd like to hear what you have to think. Uh, what creative ideas do you know about that might benefit somebody else? Thanks for taking time to watch this.